Hey, what's up? This is Willie Four Millie, the dude with the lo-fi sounds. Here's a list of 11 lo-fi plugins that I have used for sanding off those sharp corners of the track, for making things sound less clicked in and more organic, grass-fed, textured warble. These plugins were either free or cost around 30 to 100 ish dollars USD. If you pull up Crockpot, C R O C space P O T on Spotify, you can check out some of the examples where I've used the plugins in an actual song. So, okay, number one on the list is a free plugin that's extremely easy to use. If you throw this on a vocal, you could sound like the Beastie Boys. With just one knob and a light to indicate when it's engaged, it's the saturation knob by Softube. One fun thing to do is to run it in parallel with a sub bass and make it sound louder than it is. And it'll also deliver some upper harmonics to like an iPhone speaker or earbuds. You can also automate the knob so that it saturates on your favorite parts or makes it less of a static effect. You can hear this effect in action on the Crockpot song I produced and mixed called I'm My Own F***ing Man at about the 1 minute 40 mark. There's also a plugin by Waves called Lil Tube that I picked up for free. And that one's similar, but it offers a slightly different sound. Okay, number two on the list for lo-fi plugins is a paid plugin that's worth every penny. You can push levels to ridiculous heights and get amazing tape effects. Sketch Cassette 2 is the name. One thing I like to do with this plugin is to send my drums to it to give some static one-shots a bit more punch and warmth. You can get a nice sound right away by picking a preset and adjusting the knobs to your liking. If you like the look and feel of this plugin, the creator's aberrant DSP also have a couple other plugins as well. You can hear an example of Sketch Cassette on the vocals of the Crockpot song I produced and mixed called Green Man, which took a neutral sounding mic, the Shure KSM32, and really thickened it up. To hear it on drums, you can also check out the track Let Me Out. This next plugin can give you a worn out sound, buzzing electronics, the sound of scratches from a dinged up vinyl. It can take some fiddling to get a good sound out of it and is quite underpowered if you compare it to Abbey Road vinyl. But hey, it's Isotope's vinyl plugin and it's free. Plugin number four, if I can't quite get a good sound I'm looking for, I'll pull this one up. It's a tape emulation of the J37, I guess. Um, one thing you can try is to put it on a mixer track and you can flip through like over 80 presets and you can really hear what this VST can do. The built-in delay feature is one that you don't really see often in a lot of these other plugins, and I think that's pretty cool. In my workflow in general search for coarser effects, I don't generally pull up the J37 tape saturation too often because I can generally achieve quicker results with other plugins, but if you are into more subtle effects for mixing purposes or have the patience to really dial in the sound, this one would be great. It's hard to pick out the effects on this one, but I threw it on a sample on the Crockpot song Let Me Out, and it kind of smoothened out a lot of the distortions and gate effects I had thrown on it and made it more pleasing to listen to. This plugin I got for free, and for a while it was for sale, and then it was free again. It's probably back for sale. Almost all the lo-fi plugins I've used distort hi-hats too much making them super crunchy, bit crushed to the point where it doesn't even sound good at all. It saps some of the richness out of these hi-hat hits and cymbals and stuff, but I found Arturia's Tape Mellify to be really good. Instead of other plugins where you just hear some noise or hiss, uh, this one adds like a, another layer of sound. It's like a mechanical kind of tape windy sound. You want to hear an example of Mellify I have it momentarily turned on on the Crockpot song Green Man at about the two and a half minute mark. And then I also used the built in tape stop feature before a break in the section of the song. Okay, plug in number six. Uh, this one's got a great UI. If you are new to music production, it may be hard to hear what you're actually doing to the sound right off the bat. But the user interface in RC20 Retro Color makes it very visual, so you can see exactly how you're changing the sound. Not to be relied on instead of your ears, of course, but it, it just helps to see your sound being shaped in a visual way. This is a great all-in-one plug-in, lots of versatility, less of a copy of a record player or a cassette player, and more of like a combination of six different effects. 
it's pretty easy to pull out a preset and then just change a few parameters to your liking. I have used it on the master channel a couple of times at less destructive levels, at like 20% magnitude from a preset, but often I have it on a specific sound. I wouldn't recommend this for beats you are selling to put it on the master track as it can be hard to stem it out, but to glue a song together in the mixing process, it can sometimes work. You can hear some of the textures of RC20 on the song I produced and mixed for Crockpot called Basketball. In this song I have the RC20 Vinyl 1 preset with the magnitude knob set to very low, like 20%. This next plugin... Damn, son, where'd you find this? It might be super rare. I don't even know if you can get it anymore. If what you're making is too clean, you may need to put some trash on it. Uh, some of the VST presets sound like absolute garbage, and this is the cure to help dirty up a track. This is Trash 2 by Isotope. If you want to hear this effect in action, Check out the song I produced by Crockpot called Dirt. I fed the main vocal into an effect and it made like a ghostly background pad sound. And what I did was I printed the effect and then I chopped it up and kind of arranged it a bit and then automated the volume. Lo-Fi drum kit. This video is brought to you by the Lo-Fi That Slap drum kit. A collection of hard-hitting analog one-shots recorded from the analog drum machine, the RD8 and 808 clone. They were then processed and then slapped out of the box and topped up with other sounds from the secret stash. The result is a drum kit that combines the bounce of the West Coast with over 100 distressed vintage drum machine textures. You can download the drum kit at willy4millie.com. Okay, one of the most subtle lo-fi plugins I have is Abbey Road Vinyl by Waves. I'm talking subtle like switching out the turntable cartridge. Sounds at minus 39 dB subtle. If you want that vinyl sound but something that you can really dial in and tweak to perfection, this is it. If you want a bit of warmth without being too loud about it, this is a great subtle option. If you pull up the Crockpot song all about the positivity, I ran Abbey Road Vinyl on a very simple melody on the stock FL keys. I've thrown in this one because you can do live effects, almost like the SP404 or the MPC Live, like re-triggering sounds, reversing, tape stops, a bit crusher, just slightly nudging things off the grid. And it's Glitch version 1.3 that I'm using. It's a free plugin, and there's also a way nicer version, version 2, that is paid. And it looks like a more polished, user-friendly version. But for now, I've been using version 1.3 just fine. You can hear the glitch re-triggering effect on the vocal of the Crock-Pot song, Dirt, at about the one minute mark. If you want your vocals to sound like they're coming from an indie rock band, landline, telephone, foster the people, pumped up kicks, MGMT type stuff, this plugin will get you halfway there. It's an infamous plugin that mixing engineers argue about online all the time because it does crazy stuff to the EQ. If you want to hear this effect in action, check out the song I produced for Crockpot called Drive Bus. At about the one minute mark, I throw it on the vocal and it just adds a, I don't know, like a differentiator for the section of the song. If you want a heavily processed piano, you might want to check out Addictive Keys. It came free for me when I bought a Focusrite 2i2 interface. It might be paid for you, I don't know. But if you hit the edit tab, you can choose a few noise profiles virtual mics and preamp styles. I've used it to create melodies on the piano and I've chopped it up and it sounded great. Check out the VHS infomercial preset. You couldn't get any better. If you want to hear this piano in action, look up the song I produced for Crockpot called Good Crack 6. These are various plugins that can help you get a lo-fi sound. One thing to be careful for is when you are mixing is to check your EQ after the plugins as they might introduce cuts to frequencies to emulate certain effects or add frequencies from their pitch bands or noise profiles. So find a balance that works for you depending on how much artifacting you want to introduce. I'm kind of curious, do you have any of these plugins? Do you use them in your productions or mixing? Or maybe one I didn't mention? Drop a comment, let me know what plugins you use in your productions and mixing and where you use them and how you use them. If you want to support the channel, check out my Lo-Fi That Slap drum kit available at willy4millie.com. Peace.
feeling 